Hello folks, me and Max Munchkin back with a video, uh, old school style, you know, me rambling all about mechanics and this and that, losing my train of thought and the usual stuff that some of you, a lot of you actually find entertaining, so um, in the spirit of old traditions and old habits of this channel, uh, here we go. So obviously this is the third uh, part of the Eldritch Shadow video, as you can see from uh, what you can see on the screen, right? Uh, I've already talked about the key features, spells and defining characteristics in my brief overview of the build in my uh, in that video which is going to be linked somewhere in the comments description or I don't know if I forget about it which might happen during the process uh, just let me know in the comments and then I will fix it for you if you want to watch it or you can just go to my channel and you know check the video before this video and there it is. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, let's um, kind of go over each of these points and uh, delve into them a bit deeper than I did in my first video about this build. So, I made this character to be another variant human, uh, which obviously gives him a, 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 a range of choices for ability scores and all of that. I chose dexterity and constitution, um, you know, for attacks, uh, armor class, initiative... Uh, that's dexterity and constitution is more for hit points and you know maintaining concentration on spells Skills you can choose any one of your choice. I chose stealth for sneaking around you can get other ones from um, other sources, but more on that later uh, In terms of feats I picked sentinel. Uh, I will probably talk about it later as well languages I mean, it's pretty Whatever you, you can choose whatever language you want, but you know, it's there's no, it, it's something that fits the campaign or the vibe, particular flavor or vibe of your character or whatever you want, right? So in terms of point buy, uh, this is basically what I recommended in my video, in that second video, in the video that I made five days ago, where uh, you put the majority of uh, your thingies, well, I mean, you put as much as possible, as many points as possible in Dexterity and Constitution, Constitution for, as I said, more hit points and... Uh, uh, concentration spells, Shadow Blade obviously being one of them, uh, and obviously Dexterity for, um, well, attacking with your Shadow Blade, and obviously Armor Class and all of those other things that Dexterity is good for, Dexterity saves initiative, right? Um, now, uh, Eldritch Knight is intelligence-based third caster, it's a fighter, but it does have spells, and his spells are based on intelligence, so... An alternative way to make a uh, point buy for this character is to make it more intelligence heavy. The reason why we put 13 in wisdom is so that we can take resilient uh, wisdom, which will give you proficiency in wisdom saving throws and uh, increase the number up to 14. But uh, truth be told, you don't really need wisdom up to 14. You can make your perfectly fine if you just leave it at this and... Um, then make it like this, right? So, actually, yeah, even even more than that, you can you can put one uh, in strength. So even your carrying or lifting or dragging capacity uh, is a bit better. Uh, but yeah, anyway, like you can do it this way if you want a more like if you want to to dedicate more resources to your spell casting because all of your spells that have attack rolls or um, you know saving throw DCs like fireball or I don't know whatever else. They do go off your intelligence, so this is definitely one way that you can uh, make this character with this type of point by spread. Uh, one alternative is that you don't even go for a variant human, you just go good old elf, because, well, I mean, if you don't care about all the feats, elves are always good, specifically Shadar Kai, because it gives you dexterity plus two and constitution plus one. So basically, you can do point by in two ways. Um, let me just find the Shadar Kai Elf. Uh, there we go. So, for example, you can make it 16, uh, 16, 14 in, in Intelligence, and then 11 uh, in Wisdom. This will still allow you to take Resilient Wisdom Feet, uh, make a nice even 12 at some point, and have proficiency in Wisdom Saves, while still having all of your Ability Scores the same, well, basically better than the Variant Human. Alternatively, you could do something like this, I don't know, like this type of spread is a little bit more wonky maybe, but I mean you can do it if you want, uh, if you do cherish wisdom, 
Personally, I think characters that have high wisdom score uh, paired with proficiency in wisdom saving throws are much, much better off in a wider range of situations because a lot of things in D&D 5th edition keys off of wisdom saving throws. Uh, fear effects, charm effects, uh, domination effects, paralysis effects, a lot of those. I'm not gonna say all of those, but a lot of those are king off of wisdom saving throws. Uh, therefore, I did take resilient feat, uh, specifically for wisdom. So either way, if you put it at 9, so that you can make it 10, uh, or if you put it 13, so you can make it 14 at some point, it doesn't really make any difference to me. Personally, I would do it this way, I don't think you necessarily need high intelligence score for Eldritch Knights, even though they do have spells. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, in terms of uh, background options, as I said in my video four or five days ago, you don't really have to go for Ravnica backgrounds. If you've been playing for a while, you would know that those Ravnica backgrounds, they, uh, for example, Azorius Functionary, all of they, they give like extra spells, but the problem, the problem with Eldritch Knights is that they can't really learn a lot of spells. They only have like 13 of them. So there's no reason to populate your list even more with these uh, options. Wizards list of spells for Eldritch Knight is perfectly acceptable. Uh, but uh, where was I? Yeah, so Knight uh, of the Order. Uh, but yeah, anyway, like faction agent, uh, pretty, pretty um, self-explanatory. You have a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of skills. Languages you get to, features, you know, equipment pretty basic. Feature is pretty good, uh, similar to Knight of the Order, because you can get these uh, sort of like NPCs to help you, maybe. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say this is something that you can overly rely on, but every now and then, uh, if you are in a pinch and you serve this knightly order or some faction in some imaginary world of whatever choice the DM uh, decides to put you guys through, or, well, girls, you definitely could potentially maybe benefit from features like this. I mean, do do remember to remind your DM that you have this. Sometimes us DMs just forget about these things, especially if you have, like, multiple players that just back go back and forth and maybe they miss some sessions. It's very easy to forget what every character has. So, uh, yeah, remind your... Uh, you remind your you remind your DMs about those things, right? Now, in terms of the feats, uh, Resilient already touched upon it. Wisdom saving throw is pretty good. I think you need it for this character. Uh, the 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 idea behind this character is that it's not really that much of a specialist, even though it deals respectable damage. But it has like a range of defensive, some utility and uh, offensive capabilities that it makes it decently engaging to play. In a wide range of situations, I would dare and say that Eldritch Knights lend themselves better for like proper campaigns where it's not only combat or only, I don't know, exploration or something. It's a little bit of everything, like all three pillars of play, exploration, social and combat. I think Eldritch Knights fit that mold the best, like you have uh, uh, most options that can fit uh, some of those pillars. And... That said, I did make this particular character combat-oriented because, well, I find Eldritch Knights very good for combat. But, I mean, you don't have to do it that way. I think I even said in my video, like, four days ago. You can pick other spells, whatever you want, right? Sentinel, um, I've already explained why this thing is really good on this character and many other characters. It's primarily because of this, um... Benefit that you get is when a creature within five feet of you makes an attack against somebody else other than you You get to use your reaction and make a melee weapon attack against the attacking creature now This is very interesting. I will touch upon this later because um, I even got a comment on uh, That previous video about the interaction with the uh, mirror image for some reason it oh, yeah, there we go So a uh, mirror image like it makes three illusory duplicates which are basically targets of the attacks instead of you These targets get determined randomly on just a d20 roll so it can or cannot be but just in case The enemy does attack one of your three illusory duplicates should you choose to learn this spell And I think it's a very solid option on this character you do actually benefit from sentinel because when a creature attacks somebody, uh, a target, it doesn't even have to be a creature, a target can be a wall, right? 
a, a freaking monster can attack the wall, that's a target and you can sentinel it, right? You can, you can use your reaction to make an attack against that creature because the creature attacked the wall. Wall is a target, right? So, um, yeah, obviously. I don't think walls have uh, this feat. I mean, that would be very interesting if some DM decided to start giving objects feats. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm rambling already. Back to the topic of the feet, right? That's pretty much the primary reason. The secondary reason is that you do actually sometimes get the opportunity attack that you would otherwise not get because sometimes monsters or any other enemies that you're fighting do use their disengage action. So just in case that happens, and in my experience it happens every now and then, you can still have the attack of opportunity. And, um, you know, if you do, the creature speed becomes zero, so that creature, even though it used disengage and wanted to move away from you, most likely, that's usually why you use disengage, and try to move away from the enemy, the movement speed is zero, so that creature now cannot move from you. This is, um, so this thing, it's, it's a topic on its own, this is, this can be downright obnoxiously overpowered in some situations, this benefit. But you do get it with that feat, and if the DM allows the feat in its rules as written form, in its raw form, um, there's no reason not to take it, right? So there's a little bit of interaction between that and this, and um, another interaction that you can have is the Warcaster feat, which I usually put on all characters that have something to do with concentration spells. This one is no different, you do have spells that you are concentrating on, or at least that you will be or want to be concentrating on. So, advantage on constitution saves uh, when you take damage uh, on those spells, that's pretty crucial because passing those DC 10 saves, which you might get from like rocky weather or too much of a wind or something, isn't that hard, but like when you take, I don't know, 38 damage and then the DC is what, 4, no, se what is the math, math, math is hard, um, brain, why, Jesus, uh, se se 19, yeah. So, when the DC is 19, that's actually, even with your pr uh, proficiency in the constitution saving throws, more on that later, it will be very hard to get on, uh, to pass those, and you at some point do take 38 damage. That actually happens at higher levels, so this is when this feat comes into the, you know, comes to a rescue. And obviously allows a little bit more uh, easier handling of components, and obviously uh, when a creature provokes opportunity attack, Wink wink, sentinel feed, you can get your opportunity, right, with a sentinel feed. Uh, you can, uh, the creature provokes an opportunity, even if it disengages, if that happens, Vorecaster feed allows you to cast a spell. Uh, and that spell in particular is actually Booming Blade, but again, more on that later, because, well, I mean, one, one thing after another, right? Uh, I've already talked about Medium Armor Aster as well, um, I just... I, I just think this character can benefit from it because you already start out with uh, 16 in your dexterity, your po uh, point by, and uh, with medium armor master your armor class can be just one point higher with just the breastplate, like let's say you are wearing a breastplate, so which is uh, 14 plus 2 basically, uh, in this case it can be 14 plus 3, right? And then if you buy half plate, which is 15 plus two, ordinarily, uh, it becomes a 15 plus three, right, because, uh, let me just open up, um, so, armor, right, yeah, you get to see all of my websites that I, that I, that I visit, in the meantime, the tabs that are, that have been open recently, uh, come on, roll 20, open up, there we go, so, now we have medium armor, right, half plate is basic, that, that's what I said, right, maximum two, 15, Breastplate is 14, these are the prices. The problem with half plate is that, I mean, sure, it incre it basically increases your AC by 2 if you take it uh, with the combination with this feat. But obviously you have this advantage on, um, on uh, stealth, right? So, because it's heavy, right? It's a heavy plate, it's a heavy piece of armor. Same as scale mail, same as these heavy armors as well. And you, you get this advantage, but with medium armor master, you are a master of medium armor and then you can ignore it. I know that this feat is definitely on the weaker end of the, of the power curve, spectrum, range, whatever you want to consider it, but 
I think it still offers sufficient benefit for, benefit for this uh, character. That said, you definitely do not have to take it. I don't think it's super necessary, but higher armor class is always good. It's like every one point of armor, every one point of AC that you have uh, um, higher than your current one is basically five percent less chance for you to get hit. So plus two is basically ten percent chance less for you to get hit. You know, odds are fickle thing in five edition, in fifth edition, where combat has like maybe ten attack rolls per per combat. That's a statistically insignificant number, but every now and then you do, the monster does roll a number that's just one point below uh, your armor class, so increasing your armor class does increase the odds of not getting hit and not taking damage. So that's pretty much it about feats. Uh, Eldritch Knight, I mean, it's pretty kind of like, you know, it's pretty, you know, it's just what you do, right? I don't know why I have all these uh, things, let me just do... Core. There we go. All right. Uh, it's kind of weird. Let me just try to do it this way. That's probably a bit better. Uh, but yeah. Anyway. So like starting proficiencies uh, and equipment, pretty pretty straightforward. I would take uh, longbow and leather over chainmail because chainmail, obviously, it's a heavy armor, so you don't have enough strength to wear heavy armor. That does mean at level one you will have kind of. I mean, leather is 11 plus dexterity, so um, it's still 14, right? So with the shield, it's 16. That's not the best, but it's not bad, right? Uh, it, it, the moment you get enough gold to buy breast the breastplate or half plate, uh, just buy it as soon as possible. And um, if you don't take medium armor master, you will eventually get to a point where actually studded leather will be better uh, by providing just one point of higher armor class. Because if you take Breastplate, which is 14 plus 2, uh, 2 is if you don't have medium armor master feat, that's 16, right? And if you take 12 plus Dex, the Dexterity modifier for uh, light armors is not capped, it's not max, there's no limit. So if your Dexterity is 20, that's plus 5, 12 plus 5 is 17, 14 plus 2 is 16. So at some point if you do not take medium armor master feat and you do not want to suffer disadvantage on your uh, stealth checks from half plate, you def- I mean why would you, right? It, it, uh, studded leather is first and foremost it's like orders of magnitude cheaper than half plate, it doesn't provide disadvantage on stealth and it provides basically the same uh, uh, armor class as half plate. So at some point, once you maximize your dexterity, which will be sort of like late level, but you will eventually get to it if you play this character long enough, uh, you buy studded leather and Im increase your armor class that way. Uh, so maybe I should just, yeah. Um, once your dexterity is 20, so plus 5. Studded leather armor provides 1 point higher AC. There we go, now it's complete. By the way, yeah, just go to my Patreon if you want to download this file, which you see on the screen. Okay, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys, you people are pledging, like, in the Magical Secrets tier, so... I just assume that you're doing it because I'm telling you that that, that, that tier provides these files, even though I show these files in these videos. I mean, I get it, you don't want to watch 30 minute videos, but at the same time you can do it, you can just kind of like, scroll through the... Uh, thank you for doing it, but it's not necessary, there, I don't really like, the only thing I sell is convenience, right, so... If you don't have 10 bucks to spend on this, you don't have to, just watch my videos, that you're gonna get everything that people pay for, just watch the video, right? But anyway, yeah, that's it. Um... Go to my Patreon page if you do think that, you know, the perks are worth the money. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so... Uh, it's linked down in the description. Fighting style, obviously, for the fighter. Pretty straightforward, you have dueling or the du Dueling? I, I think I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but either way... Dueling and uh, defense, both are good. Defense, obviously, higher AC. Dueling, more damage. Whatever you prefer is good. I would probably go for dueling, I think you have enough armor class, especially if you take medium armor master. 
combined with the shield spell and everything else, but higher AC is never a bad thing, especially on lower levels, right? Um, so that's it about that second win, straightforward, the higher your level, the more bonus action healing you can give yourself. It's a once per short rest type of deal, but it's always good, you know, it allows you to stay in combat so, uh, more if you are the one taking all the damage, taking all the hits. Action Surge, I think this feature has been featured on this channel so many times at this point, I don't think there's any reason for me to explain it. Basically, you get two attack actions, or in this case, you can cast a spell and then attack in the same round, whatever, right? It increases your damage output significantly, allows you more flexibility on this particular character, because you do get spell casting, and uh, you borrow from the wizard's spell list, which has a lot of goodies, so... Yeah, I mean, there's no reason not to... It, it's, it's so good, like, Action Surge is so, so good. Even though it's a once per short rest ty type of deal, which gets two times per short rest at level 18. But either way, like, it's always good, you get it back, right? So you just take an hour and you are full, right? You, you can use it again. Uh, Spellcasting, borrowing from Wizards list, as I said, uh, Eldritch Knights are, are third casters, that means... They don't really have a god, they only have like 4th level slots, they don't even go up, up above, above that, and that's reasonably high level, like level 19. So for the majority of your career you will be having like level 1 and 2 spells, spell slots, um, and you won't have, you won't be really having that many uh, spells, and also your spells are gonna be kind of limited because you can only choose them, it's somewhere in their abjuration and evocation spells, but don't let that fool you, this is not really that much of a problem, because... Uh, surprise, surprise, some of the best low-level wizard spells are actually abjuration spells, and even some evocation spells are good, so... Um, yeah, more on that later. A weapon bond, <laughs> I'm... I'm putting a lot of things later, but I will get to them. Uh, weapon bond, it's not really that good on you. Um, it's, you know, you cannot really bond with some of your weapons that you're gonna be creating for yourself. But just in case you cannot cast spells for some reason, or, I don't know, some very specific s scenario happens that you have to rely on your actual mundane weapons or the tangible weapons instead of your spells, it's just kind of good. That means you will never actually be disarmed you can always just give yourself a weapon and um, this feature probably won't be useful or relevant to you 99% of the cases but in that 1% cases where that session happens where your DM decides to take all of your gear and magic items and just decides to screw you over royally this feature might actually come in handy right more options at your disposal more flexibility seven, seven ability score improvements fighters get the most ASIs compared to any other class. Rogues get 6, Fighters get 7, everybody else gets 5. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty certain it's that way. Um, extra attack, obviously, more attacks is more damage, it's pretty straightforward. The Fighter is the only class that gets uh, more attacks per attack action uh, at, at higher levels. Every other Marshal out there, Paladin, Ranger, uh, Battlesmith, Artificer, all of them, get only two attacks, and that's what they get at 5th level, and that's it, right? But a fighter at level 11 gets a third attack every time he uses attack action, and level 20 you get four attacks, uh, with all of, with every time you use attack action. So, more attacks, more damage, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, War Magic, uh, which, you, which you get at level 7, is kind of interesting, because I kind of explained a little bit of how it goes, but, uh, yeah, basically it will allow you to deal a little bit more damage with Booming Blade. Let me just kind of quickly, I already mentioned Booming Blade uh, before. But basically, yeah, uh, at level 5, uh, this spell, when you cast it, it deals uh, on top of your weapon damage, because you do make a melee weapon attack. You actually uh, stack additional 1d8 uh, thunder damage, right, at level 5. So, um, the melee attack deals blah blah blah, right? So, at level whatever, 11, it, it's 2d8, but uh, for the purpose of this, uh, we are interested in the 5th fifth, uh, fifth level um, kind of like slot. So, it's not a slot, it's kind of like an um, increment of power, whatever, it's... Uh, all cantrips improve at, at level 5, right? So, this one is not different. Um, yeah, basically, so, uh, the thing you do is... Um, okay, so how do I explain this? Uh, you cast a cantrip, right? You use your action. Instead of using your action to attack, because, you know, you would do that attack gives you two attacks, 
because extra attack, so you swing two times. No, instead what you do is, you cast a cantrip, and that cantrip is booming blade. That cantrip uh, allows you to make a melee attack. Melee, it doesn't even have to, it has to be with the weapon. But anyway, melee attack with the weapon, right, there we go. Um, and uh, that one that one deals 1d8 extra damage. Now, that's not a lot of extra damage, but it is extra damage. Why would you not do that? So, the reason why you do that, you might be thinking, but that's only one attack. I cast a spell, which is Booming Blade, and then that Booming Blade allows me to make just one melee attack instead of two with my attack action. Where's the damage, right? Well, the damage is, in this particular case, in the bonus action weapon attack, because every time you cast a cantrip, you can make one weapon attack as a bonus action, so it's kind of weird in that way, but on the flip side, a lot of characters actually fi uh, they fit into that level 7 to level 10 category. Uh, most campaigns, to my knowledge, or at least based on your guys' comments, in my experience, it's been, a, it's been different, but that's only my experience. Most characters finish their careers, most of you people that are watching this video, please let me know in the comments down below. Is that true? You finish somewhere in between level 7 and 10. So, uh, in between those 3, 4, whatever levels, several, uh, level 7, 8, 9, and 10, so 4 levels, you will be dealing strictly just 1d8 extra damage if you, instead of using your attack action, use the cast spell action and cast a cantrip, because cantrips are spells, and then with your bonus action make a weapon attack. Now, in, in practice, this doesn't really happen that easily, you use your bonus action to second wind, you use your bonus action to, I don't know, like, activate your shadow blade, more on that later, soon, soon, soon. But anyway, yeah, that's the interaction of the spells and features that you kind of have to be mindful of when you take the spells that can interact uh, in this capacity. So yeah, I don't want to spend too much more time on that. Indomitable level 9 feature allows you to reroll failed saving throws, it's, um, it, you kind of get out of uses of this feature pretty quickly, because it's a long rest type of feature. It would be much better if it was based on some, I don't know, I think short rest would be too broken. But at the same time, I mean, saving throws are a pretty big deal in the game, and at level 9, even before, it they are important. So, just having additional chances of passing them when you fail them. Uh, is good and it's even better because you know that you are re-rolling a guaranteed fail, right? Sometimes some like feats, lucky feat or some features in the game allow you to re-roll but you don't know whether you failed or succeeded so if you hear the doors that's my parents slamming them so just apologize for that but anyway um, yeah that's the indomitable feature as you get leveling as you start leveling up you get more uses of it and uh, yeah, it's, it's just good, right? It's it's not super flashy or anything, it's just good, right? You can always count on it to give you one more chance of passing something important. I wouldn't really bother using this on, like, even fireballs or stuff like that. You can always manage damage. Uh, I would bother, I would use these types of features on, like, frightened effects, or especially if somebody is trying to stun you, paralyze you, I don't know, inflict... Um, uh, for, uh, exhaustion effects on you, something that's really hampering your ability to fight, to function properly, to move. Let's uh, let's say confusion spell, right? So you fail a confusion spell, now you... Or like slow spell, or, so, or some of those like very nasty effects that you get, uh, that failing those saving throws is like gonna really hamper your performance. It's gonna decrease your performance instead of just taking damage, right? You can... At level 9, you you should, I don't know how much hit points you have at level 9, but like 70, 80, 90, um, you can take damage. But once you fail those uh, saving throws against stuns, frightens, I don't know, par paralysis, uh, petrification, petrification is even worse. All of those just use indomitable on those, right? You, you have to pick and choose which, which effects you're kind of like uh, using this on. Like sometimes... Um, the DMs won't really provide this information freely, so they will be kind of like more tricky and sneaky. They will just try to describe some things instead of just telling you flat out, okay, you're gonna get stunned if you don't succeed on this. But I mean, you have to, you know, it's a social game, you have to kind of like figure out how it works. It's, it's, every table is different, every DM has a different style. I often tell these things up front, especially for higher level characters, but that's not always the case with all the DMs. And, yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on this feature. Uh, Eldritch Strike, 
there are ways to, to utilize this feature a bit better than this character does. Um, maybe a little bit better if you do choose to make your intelligence uh, a bit higher, right? As I said before, you can do something like this, right? Um, or, I don't know, um, yeah, this. Whatever you choose, right? You can make your intelligence 14 in this case, maybe... Uh, Eldritch Strike will be slightly better because the saving throws against your sp the spell save DC on the spells that you cast that have a saving throw mechanic it will be better. So inflicting disadvantage on those is gonna be like even cu uh, the cumulative effect is gonna be more um, impactful. But at the same time, like just imposing disadvantage on the saving throws even with lower intelligence score does increase your uh, does increase the chances of the monster to fail those saving throws and um, I don't really think that you need high intelligence score but you can definitely do it somehow in this fashion let me let me pull it back to variant human because um, I think this is better with human but you can definitely it, play with elf right um, there are so many options damn all right um, hmm. yeah so something like this yeah <clears throat> there we go um, yeah, definitely. Okay, boom. There we go. Alright, um... So that's it about the Eldritch Strike. I mean, pretty straightforward. You hit the creature, the creature has disadvantage on saving throws. That's it. Uh, you get more uses of your extra attacks, indomitables, you more ASIs as you level up. Uh, Arcane Charge at level 15, more mobility is always good. Uh, it's not a plentiful thing, like, you can only use it, um... Um, with your action surge, and action surge is only once or twice per short rest, you do get a second use at level 17. But, um, it's still good because sometimes you do miss those, like, 30 feet or something, like, it, it, it very often happens that you, you just need to move, like, 20, 30 feet more and then you're good, but you don't have that extra movement, so you have to action surge to move, like, to use dash action or something, which is incredibly wasteful, but sometimes you have to do it. Arcane Charge does allow you to just ignore that and give you more mobility when you need it, right? Um, so, yeah, this is especially good when the DMs uh, put you on larger maps, like some caverns that are in hundreds of feet of distances. So you have to close a lot of distance to get in, uh, in melee with the enemy. You know, it's stuff like that. Like, more uh, circumstances always change. Uh, there's a million variables and... Uh, this is the feature which will make it easier for you, easier for you to deal with those variables. Uh, improved War Magic is similar to War Magic, but instead of just being able to cast uh, Cantrip, you can cast a spell and then attack with a, with a bonus action. It's more like when you decide to cast a Fireball or some other high-level spell, I don't know, Fire Shield or whatever. You can, um, you can do that and attack with your bonus action. But I mean, it's not gonna be something that you're gonna be relying on overly. It's just the, kind of like the action economy equalizer more than the feature that's gonna incredibly improve your if efficiency, right? You're already very efficient, even before level 18. So that's it about the fighter features, like a little bit of, uh, about items, I, um, so I'm probably gonna spend way too much time on this, but I'm gonna try to make it quick. Uh, Ruby of the War Mage, I got a comment recently that stated that you, uh, how, how do you use this when, um, Shadow Blade, which is the... Let me just open it, I uh, talked about it uh, a lot, so let me just... It's basically this spell, you use a bonus action to make yourself a weapon that deals psychic damage. That's it, like, that's the gist of this spell. Uh, it gets better with slots, but more on that later. So, you, with your bonus, uh, this is the spell that you're gonna be relying on the most. So, with your bonus action, you make a weapon that deals psychic damage. But the fact is, this spell, this weapon only lasts one minute, right? And for the Ruby of the War Mage, requires attunement, that's a one hour ordeal. And um, how do you do that with a one minute weapon? Well, the answer is you can't. There's just, it doesn't work, right? So, how does it? Ev how does this even, you know, work? But Raw, it doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't synergize with, um, can't type, with uh, Shadow Blade, but uh, by, by the... Huh, how do I say this? By the by the grace of your DM, by the DM being a reasonable person, uh, it's not that far-fetched to just ask DM, can I please use this ruby and put it in my shield? 
put it in the in the glove of my I don't know gauntlet or something you know just something that's not covered by the description of what this item does but I mean it's a ma it's magic so magic doesn't make any sense anyway so what's the point of having rules for magic when it's has it's got no basis in reality so just ask a DM politely hey DM can I please have this can I you know I'm using this spell blah 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 and you gave this to me, can I put it in my shield or armor or something so I can still get the benefit, but... You know, maybe bribe the DM a little bit, buy him a pizza, or I don't know. I'm not really entirely against pay to win, you know, just give him some money. I, I mean, I don't know, whatever, do whatever you want, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a game. It's sometimes you have to pay, and you pay with words, or you pay with money, or you pay with time. Or something else, energy, investment of uh, something, I don't know. But yeah, that's pretty much it, right? So, you know, but a good DM will just let you add. I, I think the, the word is they, um, do they, do they use the word? I, yeah, okay, so, oh no, so attach, whatever. It's just, it, yeah, attach. Attach to armor or shield or whatever. Right, so that's my thoughts on Ruby of the War Mage. The reason why you need it is, well, I mean, it's good because it does allow you to to have an easier time dealing with material components, right? Some spells require material, material components, uh, Shadow Blade doesn't, but for example, Fireball does. So for Fireball, you do need, like, I, if you don't have the um, Arcane Focus, and uh, Eldritch Knights specifically cannot, they don't get the benefit of the... Their spellcasting feature doesn't allow them to use spellcasting foci. Is that even a word? Is that is that the... Somebody let me know in the comments. I think it's foci, but if it's foci... Correct me, in the comments. Thank you. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, Ruby of the War Mage is like a cheap alternative for not having that capability. Now you can... You can ignore material components if the DM lets you put this in your shield, armor, clothing, gauntlet. I don't know, if you can attach it to your forehead like freaking Vision from Marvel, go for it, right? I mean, I don't know. So, that's my thoughts, yeah. So, I don't know, I spent five minutes on this, let's move on. Uh, Goggles of Night, pretty straightforward, gives you dark vision. I don't think I need to spend five minutes on this item. Uh, Adamantine Armor... Uh, I don't think I need to spend five minutes on this one either because, well, I mean, well, well uh, half plate, sure, let's go for that one. It's just all the crits against you become normal hits. You still get hit, but it's, at least you don't get like shit faced with a lot of damage, right? You take damage, but it's not damage that's gonna significantly reduce your hit points, right? So um, that's good, right? Armor with the plus one or two, three increases your AC, same as shields. So yeah, let's just go through these quickly. Uh, Mantle of Spell Resistance. Um, I mean, look, uh, it's it's you don't have to have it. It's it's an atonement, but like advantage against saving throws against spells. It's good because at higher levels, more spells can happen, right? More, there are more and more monsters that actually fling spells at you, so you're not gonna be the only one, or your party members are not gonna be the only ones who cast spells. Some of the monsters and enemies will too. So yeah, uh, Ring of Spell Storing, you don't have a lot of slots, so there you go. Um, God damn. Um, there we go, it more like just store some Shadow Blades in it, or I don't know, uh, shields, or whatever you want, right? Whatever you are using the most. So, yeah. Uh, Ion Stones of uh, Agility and Intellect increase your, um, well, Dexterity or, or Intelligence uh, of... I don't even know. Um, so, Iron Stone, it's something, something, yeah, agility. Uh, basically, increases your dex by 2 to a maximum of 20. Uh, intellect is the same, uh, same but, but for intelligence. Uh, manuals of Quickness um, is the same thing, but it's kind of permanent. Uh, well, I mean, it's not an effect that activates, but it's just permanent effect, and... Clear thought as well, so it needs to be tome. Yeah, anything that increases your intelligence or dexterity, so that you don't have to waste your... 
I'm not saying ways, but that you don't have to spend your ability score improvements, which fighters have plenty of, right, at level, uh, what, 4, 6, 8, 12, 14, 16, and 19, that's plenty of ability score improvements, but that's still not enough to increase your, all of your ability scores up to 20, so some of these items can definitely uh, help with that. So, now that I've spent 40 minutes just talking about all of these things, I'm gonna spend another 40 minutes talking about spells. So, if you haven't so far, go take a shit, pause the video, grab some popcorns and strap yourself in because this is gonna be a long one. So, these spells are just my recommendations, blah blah blah, all of the usual shit, right? Um, so, yeah, I'm probably gonna get demonetized because I'm cursing a lot, but hey, who cares? Um... Where's my spells? There we go. Booming Blade. Already talked about that one. No reason to spend any more time on it. Uh, light spell. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just gives yourself give yourself light, especially if you're a human. You don't have dark vision. So how do, how do you see in dark? You turn on the light. And um, one one other spell that's kind of interesting that I just kind of like recently started uh, considering in this manner is control flames. Is uh, why why specifically because. Uh, it does rec it does allow you it's somewhere in here um you can um uh, you can uh, f s uh somehow somehow something okay there we go you double or half the area of bright light and dim light caused by the flame change its color or both the change lasts for one hour so a uh, torch is typically uh 20 feet uh, bright light 20 feet dim light right with this thing uh, a torch is a flame, right? You expand bright light to 40 feet and dim light to additional 40 feet, right? So basically you have 80 feet of vision, which is double the light cantrip. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Sure, a little bit of water and um, wind can turn off that torch. But I, in my experience, that doesn't, hap that doesn't happen very often. It sometimes does, so pick and choose, right? That's why I put these two cantrips in the same line. Light is definitely more consistent, but uh, Control Flames is um, does definitely expand your visibility. Uh, and then for your level 10, at level 10 you get option to, uh, to learn third cantrip. So it's either one of these. I'm not gonna spend too much time. There's a lot of those. I already talked about these many, many times in my previous videos. And if you've been playing the game for any amount of time, you would know that these spells are pretty good. Um, the, there's no, like, consensus of whether, you know, some people think that message is trash, some people think that prestigitation is trash. Some people don't think Mage Hand is that good. Some people think Mage Hand is very good. So whatever you choose, right? It's The game ha offers you options, that's why I provided all of these. Whichever you pick, just try to avoid overlap because chances are some of your other party members are gonna have at least one or two of these so you know just uh, give your give your yourself not just yourself but your party options right so more options it's always better uh, level one wizard spells pretty straightforward shield plus five to AC right um, this is where we go with the abjuration and evocation so um, of all the level one spells Shield and Absorb Elements are legitimately some of the best spells that you can take, right? Because Absorb Elements, as the name says, absorb some of the elemental damage and even allows you to dish some of that damage back. So, oftentimes, the creature that attacks you with fire is resistant or even immune to fire damage, but at least you have the option or chance to deal a bit more damage with this spell. Uh, and shield in a similar f uh, way in imp increases your AC temporarily for a round and uh, all the attacks are like what 25 it's 25 percent chance harder to hit you and your armor class is already 19 20 21 to begin with so it's 26 with this spell that's like you know it's obnoxious so w what can I say uh, you're gonna be hard to hit and that's what you want you don't want to be taking damage the goal of every character is to be taking less damage. So there you go. That's how you do it. Uh, Featherfall, not a mandatory spell. But I mean, you do sometimes find yourself falling from very, very high elevations. B big heights. Huge heights. So there you go. This spell fixes that. Uh, the one that I would take is definitely protection from evil and good. 
and uh, because it, it it is a concentration spell but sometimes the goal is just to live and uh, you know the, sometimes the way you do that is just put yourself in a position where the enemy has the least amount of chance chance to hit you and this spell it's a level one spell and uh, it's very cheap in that regard and allows you to deal with a lot of creature types aberrations celestials elements that's a lot of creature types and it works against all of them so no reason not to take it at level two uh you're gonna have your warning wind i think uh of all the options that uh, level two evocation and abjuration spells offer let me just kind of like make it this way so it's kind of obvious uh, all of these ones, I mean, Shadow is good, sure, but um, you do have to take a lot of level 2 spells. So, uh, Arcane Lock, that's... No, like, why would you... That This is pointless. Why would you be locking doors and chests? Uh, so, you, there's no actual logical reason to take this. So, some of these evocation spells you're gonna have to take. Uh, Warding Wind, obviously. Um, that's probably the best one, even though it's the... Uh, uh, evocation uh, even though it's a concentration spell but i mean it allows you to protect yourself against all of these effects right so um that's it for that misty step definitely if you can pick uh, either of these two spells misty or um what's the other one uh, mirror image uh, misty is more mobility mirror image already kind of covered interaction of mirror image and uh, sentinel feet but even without sentinel feet mirror image is good because there's a chance that even though if the monster rolls like a critical hit that critical hit is not gonna go against you but against some of these three illusions um sometimes it happens that the monsters especially at higher levels have blind sight true sight or whatever but um more often than not this spell just works fine and uh, it's always good like a cheap investment or protective layer that you can uh, put on yourself the main spell, obviously, Shadow Blade, which you can pick at level 7 or 8. I did make a slight lapsus lingue in my uh, short overview video of this build where I said that you can pick Shadow Blade earliest at level 8. It's not really entirely true because at level 7, when you get level 2 spells, right, um, you can choose to replace your Feather Fall, for example, for Shadow Blade. Instead of waiting at, for level 8 when you get your uh, thing to... You know, uh, Eldritch Knights can learn non-evocation, non-abjuration uh, spells at level 8, 14, and 20. And level 3. But um, you don't have to wait for level 8 to get Shadow Blade. Shadow Blade is not evocation or um, abjuration. It's uh, actually illusion spell, which is slightly weird because... It kind of re reminisces more of a transmutation spell, conjuration spell, but for some reason yeah definitely conjuration but it's illusion for some reason whatever it's just it's schools of magic they don't make sense they don't make sense it's a topic for another video so let's try to blaze through these uh but anyway yeah so shadow blade uh straightforward main source of damage you can deal even more damage with some feats but um with this spell you don't have the minus five to hit pe penalty and obviously in dim light or darkness you have advantage so even though you're blind as a human, uh, if you cast this spell in darkness, and it's total darkness, you still have advantage. So uh, the disadvantage from not seeing the enemies is going to be cancelled by advantage this spell provides. So even though you're not maximizing the damage, at least you are uh, dealing with the fact that you cannot see the enemies. So um, it's kind of good. Uh, obviously, if you take elf, you're going to have advantage in darkness too there that's just obvious the, the reason why we, the reason why i even said that you that you can definitely take shadar kai um up above is because well i mean they have dark vision so you can see in the dark and then if you if you can see in the dark you can have advantage in the dark right um i'm probably some it's somewhere in the, yeah there we go so when you blah 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 when you're in dim light or darkness all of your attack rolls are basically uh, with advantage so yeah, uh, you make yourself a weapon, and uh, this magic sword, this magic weapon lasts for one minute, it's a concentration, deals 2d8 psychic damage at level 2 sp uh, slot, at level 3 slot and level 4 slot it deals 3d8. Uh, for a solo class, single class Eldritch Knight, this is gonna be the 
maximum damage this spell deals, but if you choose to multiclass into some full casters, you will actually be able to deal 48 damage, maybe even 5d8 if you go very deep into a wizard or some for some reason you want to do it that way, I, I mean, I don't know. You can do whatever you want, right? Uh, for this character specifically, uh, 3d8 is uh, the way you go, right? So yeah, Shatterer obviously, um, some a evocation spell that gives you uh, AoE damage. Uh, you don't have to take it, but I think it's the best one of the bunch. And obviously Scorching Ray, even though you have low intelligence, uh, you can... You, three attack rolls, at least one of those is gonna hit. Fire damage is often resisted, but honestly, of all the choices, I think this is the best one. Uh, at level 3, no reason not to take uh, Counter Spell. It's an abjuration spell, so um, yeah, I mean, just take it. It's it's gonna be countering all the spells that are gonna be cast by enemies, and um, yeah, you, you at least you have a chance every time, right? Especially because you're gonna be in melee, or you're gonna be trying to be in melee. One of the things with counter spell that uh, many spellcasters struggle with is the range. 60 feet might seem like a lot, but actually in a lot of cases when you have ranged spellcasters that rely on cantrips and spells uh, at range and then they stay a little bit farther away from their enemies, it often happens that their enemies like 70, 80, even 100 feet away from them and then they cannot counterspell them. You specifically will be able to in most cases because you're gonna be wanting to go in melee uh, because of Shadow Blade, right? Uh, then we have the Fireball or Lightning Bolt. Personally, lately, the more I play, uh, the more I like Lightning Bolt. Fireball definitely has that potential to deal with hordes who just swarm some area and then you just blanket deal damage to all of them. This is like a... Fireball is one of the best action economy equalizers that the party has access to and it's the it's the it's overpowered it's been admitted by the designers it's overpowered for a level 3 spell that's kind of like the design of it it's the intention of the spell to be slightly overpowered but at the same time it oftentimes takes your allies you know sometimes you cannot avoid dealing damage to your allies so in that regard i like lightning bolt more and more you can usually target at least two creatures sometimes even three of them and in a lot of cases, unless the DM chooses to uh, just dump a bunch of kobolds or, I don't know, gnolls or goblins at you, Lightning Bolt is gonna be dealing the same damage as Fireball or even more because fire damage is often more resisted or even immune to than lightning damage. To my knowledge, I might be wrong, but lightning damage is... There are less monsters and enemies, at least in the... Uh, official like default stock game that are resistant or immune to lightning damage than fire damage so there's pros and cons right uh, the area of effect of a lightning bolt is definitely less um, conducive to dealing damage to like 10 creatures much much less than fireball fireball can definitely target 10 creatures it doesn't often happen but it's much there's much more chance for that to happen but I mean yeah there's pros and cons to it um, a lightning bolt more less less chance of a monster being resistant or immune to the damage type uh, less chance of you targeting your allies because you just you you are you're forced to so um yeah there we go uh, magic circle uh for this character specifically you have to choose a lot of abjuration and evocation spells this is kind of like protection from evil and good it's not a concentration uh or it, it can be just a temporary uh, prison uh, yeah, you can protect yourself from these uh, creature types. There's uh, less creature types. It doesn't protect you against aberrations. But oftentimes you don't even fight aberrations. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it depends. I, I would pick it. It's it's good enough. But at the same time, it's not probably going to be something that I'm going to be casting very many often times. A at the same time, it definitely works. So, it's just uh, for some reason, people don't often take it. I don't often take it, but... Whenever somebody take this spell and cast it in the game, it's actually useful. So, um, yeah, why, why, why would you not break the mold a little bit, go off path? And then we have the Blink, uh, Haste and Fly, which are these uh, non-abjuration evocation spells. I would probably take Blink, it's such a good defensive countermeasure. At the same time, uh, there's a little bit of a... Uh, 
anti-synergy with counter spell because if you blink out of existence, if you if you blink out of the plane of existence that you're currently on, and if you blink into the ethereal plane, you are not there to use your counter spell. So there's pros and cons to this spell. You can definitely protect yourself a lot from damage because you have a, like a coin toss flip chance to just not even be there. But at the same time, if you're not there, some of your things are not gonna be active, so... Your sentinel feat, you're not gonna be able to use it. You're not gonna be able to deal with deal damage with it. Your counter spell already mentioned your other reactions. Uh, she... well, I mean all of the other ones, right? So... It... pros and cons. Uh, haste... Uh, I mean, haste is... Haste is always a problematic spell. Uh, it's so good. It's uh, more flexibility, more mobility, more armor class, everything. But then, what usually happens is you lose concentration by taking like 40 damage. You take 40 damage, the DC for that concentration is 20. You fail that DC, even with Warcaster it happens, it's a very high DC. And then, you, uh, you get this very, very bad uh, side effect. So... You cannot move or take actions until after your next turn. So, let's say you lose your thing in the middle of the round, you skip a turn completely, and then, like, in, in most cases, you... In most cases, this, this spell actually ends up hurting people that cast it on themselves. Uh, you can still take it, but um, this spell, I think, is the best on Sorcerer, who takes Twinned Meta Magic uh, feature. And I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but basically with the Twind you can haste two targets instead of just one. And then after you do that, you just move the heck away from the battlefield so you don't take any damage. And you leave your Fighter Barbarian, whoever you cast this spell on, to attack, move, you know, have more AC, take less damage, all of that things. So yeah, uh, the reason why I would not take it is probably because Fly... It gives you basically exactly the same movement speed buff, 60 feet. In most cases, it's the same as haste. And um, it's, it gives you the ability to fly up and deal with flying enemies and all of that stuff. So I think fly is better than haste in terms of like buffing yourself. But at the same time, haste does give you more of these other like combat uh, numerical and uh, action economy benefits, right? So pros and cons. In terms of a, a little bit of a control, if you don't want to go just for more like um, buffing yourself, but actually dealing with enemies in more insidious manners, Hypnotic Pattern is by far one of the best illusion spells, so again, if you don't want to blink haste or fly, Hypnotic Pattern is gonna be allow you to, uh, to control uh, enemies, uh, just temporarily time them out of the combat, not even uh, make them a non-factor. Uh, while they are being hypnotized, charmed, you are just dealing with the leftovers. And um, those enemies who you hypnotize, well, charmed, they are not doing anything, right? So, that's that's good in that regard. Major Image is, uh, has a potential to be very, very powerful. I've seen it working wonders, but the, the, the problem with this spell is that um, it uh, it's very dependent on the DM's interpretation of um, how enemies, monsters, and NPCs perceive it. So, the most powerful spell in your arsenal, it could be, but at the same time, it could be a waste of a third level slot. If you have a DM who primarily focuses on numbers and mechanical effects instead of, like, interpretative uh, uh, interaction of spells and enemies and NPCs uh, in, in the flow of combat. Because, like, you know, this, the, the, the DM can just say, well, it's an illusion, so the monster ignores it because whatever some special sense. I mean, some DMs do even do that that stuff. They just want you to deal damage or, you know, use illusions uh, in in a sense of hypnotic... Pa so, both of these spells are illusions, right? But hypnotic pattern has a very clearly defined mechanical effect, right? So, it's very clear what this spell does. Uh, major image is very... It's not... It's, it's loosely defined. It's vague. And it's not, like... It's not that it's bad. It's, it, it's been specifically designed that way is because it allows you to be creative, to think out, outside of the box, to come up with something very interesting that it's gonna trick the enemy or some NPCs or whatever 
into thinking that something or somebody is there when it's not, right? So, yeah, pros and cons to everything, like always. Uh, banishment, I mean, you only have one level 4 slot. Yeah, even at level 20, you only get one of those. So, you have to pick yours. I don't think you should, like, populate your list with a lot of level 4 spells. However, I would go for banishment even with your level intelligence. Why? Because since you can only cast one level 4 spell... And with your Eldritch, what's the, where's the fighter? Yeah, so with your Eldritch thingamajig, um, level 10 feature, <clears throat> you hit the creature, it has disadvantage on the whatever saving throw uh, against some of your spells. And then you uh, do the banishment thing, right? Uh, wisdom saving throw, uh, no, charisma saving throw. Charisma saves are not that prevalent in the game, at least not to my knowledge. A, a fair few monsters have them. But more monsters are like constitution, strength, dexterity, maybe wisdom, uh, pr proficient in those instead of charisma. Charisma is less frequent. So, on top of that, uh, less, uh, less possibility, at least based on my knowledge. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. If somebody has stats because I am talking out of my ass, please pull them up. Uh, just p put them in the comments and uh, let me know if I'm wrong. So, yeah. Um... But anyway, at least in my experience, I've been dealing with enemies that have more li like physical saving throw proficiencies or or like wisdom, but charisma not so much. So banishment uh, combined with uh, obviously Eldritch Strike, disadvantage, charisma, there's a decent chance that the monster is gonna be, well, banished. So there you go. Um, it's a good spell. You don't have to take it, I would personally take it even with low intelligence, it's just overall very good. It, 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 it allows you to deal with the monster. Uh, if you're dealing with like way too many monsters, taking way too much damage, just temporarily uh, cutting, them, cutting one of them off is uh, sometimes it's a good thing. And it's gonna definitely allow you to be a little bit of more of a help in terms of not just another fighter that deals damage, but actually a fighter that that can control the flow of combat a little bit, at least a little bit, right? But if you do want to deal more damage and um, punish the enemy for attacking you, especially if it's a horde or a monster that has like three, maybe even four, maybe even five attacks with its multi-attack, Fire Shield is definitely worth a fourth level spell slot because every time the monster hits you, you can deal 2d8 fire damage or 2d8 cold damage. And, um, yeah, so it even it even gives you a little bit of a light, but that's not that important. Um, it, it does actually kind of counter-synergize with Shadow Blade a little bit, but at the same time, at level 19 and 20, if your party doesn't have at least a couple of ways to give you advantage that is not just you giving yourself advantage with Shadow Blade, then, um, I don't know, something's wrong with your party, what can I say, it's not optimized. So, uh, there you go. That's it for the spells, right? In terms of progression, um, just take your feats, um, take your spells, pretty straightforward, you can see it on the screen, I'm not gonna go into each and every one of these levels. Um, I would like to talk a little bit of, about these multi-class alternatives. We can make an argument against... Um, an argument for, wow, okay, uh, for, uh, an argument for going, I don't know, oh yeah, actually it makes sense, an argument against going solo fighter, yeah, okay, so actually, yeah, it's cool, um, I think, um, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, I think, uh, 11 fighter levels are like, you gotta have, three attacks, that's just bare minimum. That's just, you know, you gotta get that. But, if you choose, if for example, if you play a campaign that goes up to level 15, 16, 17, but you are fairly certain, or even your DM told you, yeah, we are not gonna go up to level 20, but there is a chance you are gonna reach, like, level, you know, those, like, high tier 2, high tier 3, low tier 4 levels. Um, Eldritch Knight... War Mage, so for some reason I didn't open up the uh, Wizard, for some reason, I don't know why, uh, but uh, yeah, Wizard, which is probably gonna be like some War Mage stuff, 
Um, where are we? Where are we? Uh, there we go. Yeah, so War Wizard. Why? Well, I mean, uh, some of you are gonna comment down. Oh, Blade Singer. Well, Blade Singers cannot wear shields. They cannot wear armor. They, um, they, uh, yeah, sure, but it's a different character. It's a very different character uh, compared to what we have here. So, um, for, it's, it's different enough so that I don't think it's a good thing for this particular, uh, for this particular setup, right? So, using this setup, we go up to level 12 with the uh, fighter to get those ability score improvements. At level 11, you'll get your, um, your third attack with your attack action, right? You get your extra attack. And then with wizard, you get arcane deflection, tactical wit, and power surge. And obviously, two ability score improvements. Um, point by is kind of a little bit wonky, but at the same time, it's similar to what I listed above. In this case, I think having a little bit higher intelligence is good, because Wizard is gonna give you a lot of spells. And um, you will want to have um, a bit higher intelligence, because you will have more spells to, 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 to use, right? I would go for... Um, I would probably go for more like utility still in that case, even though definitely with your wizard levels, do not ignore counter spell banishment, fire shield, or even dimension door, right? And um, one thing that you will get with this is that at some point, I think at like level 17, maybe 18, I don't know, uh, you will get uh, fifth level slots, right? So combining full caster and third caster. With the third caster, uh, 12 levels of third caster basically gives you 4 levels of uh, multi-class spell caster. So 4 plus 8 is 12, so you have 12 levels of... So basically you can see, you can see it as this. You got 12 levels of, 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 of a full caster in this combination. So that gives you 1 level 6 slot, 2 level 5 slots and all of these other ones, right? So you will have plenty of 5th and 6th level slots to cast your Shadow Blade with. So your Shadow Blade is gonna be dealing, uh, instead of 3d8, is gonna be dealing uh, 4d8, right? So that's kind of like the reason to me, uh, one of the things that you get, one of the benefits with uh, full ca full caster multi-class. Um, that's pretty much about it. Uh, again, if you go up to level 20, there's nothing wrong with just single class fighter. You cannot go wrong with this. Uh, yes, you won't have a lot of slots, you won't have a lot of spells. But that's, you're a fighter, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to have just enough slots for what you do, and then use your fighter features, combine with your spells and all of your attacks to deal damage, control enemies, protect yourself, protect your allies, and uh, be a valuable member of your, of your party. One thing that, um, okay, so Hexblade, mm, pros and cons, right? It, it's an awkward point, by. But the reason why we go Hexblade is... Um, well, let me just uh, do the Warlock thing. Um, and uh, Hexblade. Let's do this. So the reason we go Hexblade is for a uh, Hexblade's Curse, right? So, uh, yeah, critical hit, maybe. Uh, sure, you give yourself maybe a bit more damage that way. But the reason we do this is um, the bonus damage, a flat bonus increase, right? The bonus equals your proficiency bonus. So with your three attacks, level 11 Eldritch Knight and level 1 Hexblade, you will be dealing at least, I don't know, like 12 to something extra damage every round, which doesn't seem like much, but let's say action surge and everything hits, so 6 attacks hit, and maybe even sentinel feed gives you a reaction, so 7 attacks. 7 attacks at level 12, which, uh, you know, proficiency bonus is what, 4? So that's like 28 extra damage in that first round. That's not... That's not a lot, but that's significant. That's actually a very significant amount of damage. So, as always, he Hexblade is always kind of like busted. But in this way, there's a sufficient reason for just that damage increase to make yourself slightly wonky with point buy. Uh, and give yourself this. Obviously, also get the shield spell. There's no reason not to take shield with Hexblade instead of taking it with your um, sh um, Eldritch Knight. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously, a uh, second level of, of your um, Hexblade gives you your Eldritch Invocations, so you take your good old trusty Devil's Sight, and um, where is it, De where is it, where is it, there we go, Devil's Sight, and uh, this thing gives you basically Dark Vision up to 120 feet, and um, 
yeah, so that deals with your uh, lack of dark vision as a human. Finally, Artificer. Um, the reason we go in Artificer is there's two reasons. So first one is um, defensive something something, uh, enhanced defense. So just this uh, this infusion alone, second level Artificer gives you infusions. And then you can infuse your shield and armor with these plus one benefits. That's reason enough. If your DM doesn't give you enough of these plus ones or plus twos to, to your AC, armors and shields, you can definitely give them to yourself if you dip two levels in Artificer. And if you are bothered by the lack of dark vision in your human form, you can definitely replicate some magic items. And uh, some of those items are Goggles of Night, right? So Goggles of Night will definitely give you 60 feet of dark vision. And uh, I have already covered those. Pretty straightforward. Uh, this is also a viable tier 2, uh, tier two option, I think, because um, plus 1 AC, dark vision... That's good at level uh, from level like I don't know six seven to up to level ten, where as I said probably a lot of characters end up with, and um, again I would probably still go at least five or six levels in fighter, for that extra attack and ability score improvements at level four and six, but then deep into artificer for that uh, dark vision, and um, those uh, juicy juicy at least plus one to your. Um, armor class because you put it in your shield or armor right i would put it in armor because it's much easier it's much harder to well nobody can just easily disarm you of your armor they cannot really just doff your armor that easily but some monsters can just knock your shield off out of your hands right so putting it in armor is better than in shield right but if you want to just put it in your armor and your shield you can do it, definitely. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, super good uh, shout out, you know, special shout out to my patrons. Uh, my throat is out, uh, so I'm just gonna say, everybody that's in this file, thank you for your support. Um, I just have to stop talking because I'm losing my throat. If you still want to download this file and all the other uh, files in the past and in the future, Go into the Magical Secrets tier, everything is posted on my Patreon page, including the Discord server access, special to my patrons, all the other benefits. And if you think I'm worth the time, worth the money, worth the trouble, there's the thing. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening to me, thank you for, uh, I don't know, if you're still watching this video, you're a champion. I honestly, like to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think I ever listen to my own videos that last an hour and a half so thank you for that too like share comment subscribe hit the bell button you know the youtube drill uh, min max munch out and uh, talk to you soon